Hey there guys, welcome back to another episode from The VoIP Guys. So after last week's sort of little yeah, diversion into introducing uh, IdeaScale and our, pro our profile there, um, we've decided to plow right on ahead and we've actually voted for something what Matthias did. He said it's cool we're doing it, so here we are with a new topic. Yes. Uh, Matthias, what are we doing? First, we hope that more uh, people will vote on our ideas. Well, more than just you and I. <laughs> yes, because I like everything and you don't like, so it's the same at the end. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, I to be fair. Hang on, I do like everything that's astro astro astronomical related. That's true. That's yeah. True, yes. Okay. Um, but yeah. So, so help us, please. Yeah, get voting and help me win. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Anyway, I'm going to introduce a new topic. We're yeah. doing Asterix cool files. Um, so, Matthias, what are Asterix cool files and why do we need them? Asterix call file is, as the name says, a file. Mm -hmm. You put something in and then you copy it mm -hmm. uh, to the Asterix spool directory and then it does something. So okay, fair enough. Magic is <laughs> happening. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, what does happen in detail? Mm -hmm. Um, asterisk spools a directory or has a spool directory where it's waiting for that somebody puts a file in. Mm -hmm. And if so, it reads um, the content of the file. Mm -hmm. Then it does what instructions are ever, in, no, not whatever, but... The instructions that are contained within yes. the file, asterisk yes. will then perform. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Anytime. And, um, <laughs> Then it does things like it connects a channel mm -hmm. to a target, and this could be you to the monkeys, or my favorite. yes, or you to another uh, context, or okay. something like this. Um, we will explain this in detail okay. um, and how this this works. Um, that's basically it. All right. Before we get into the technical details of, of um, Asterix call files, can you give us a use case scenario? Uh, yes, I think one of the most common use cases is if you're an administrator at least, mm -hmm. um, then it is alarming, I think. Okay. If you have an application for monitoring your network like uh, uh, Isinga or Nagios mm -hmm. or whatever. Whatever monitoring solution you may yes, have. Then maybe you want, in case of an alarm, maybe you want to call somebody, the administrator or something. Mm -hmm. In most cases you just write an email. Yeah. But Email, many things have to work to send the email. So the internet connection uh, for sure, then your mm -hmm. mail server, the next hop of the mail server, the DNS server, I don't know what. There are a lot of components yes. of the chain that could be broken. Yes. Um, yeah, okay. Yes, and if you if you uh, use an alarming system, maybe which is connected to an analog line, which works with um, asterisk for mm -hmm. sure, then there is only the analog line and asterisk or something like mm -hmm. this. Um, or you can go by uh, GSM or something. Right. If you use a zip trunk, then you have the same problem as by mail. Yeah. But you have the second way, so mm -hmm. it makes sense. Okay. And then, in case of alarm, you just copy your file to the server with FSCP or something like this. Mm -hmm. It does not matter. Just copy the file to the server somehow to the spool directory. Mm -hmm. And this is also a simple technology, no API, no nothing. Okay. A file, put it there, so it's reliable. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's it, and then it makes a call and calls you, maybe, mm -hmm. and connects you to your system, and there you have a voice prompt or something which says server XYZ is down. Wow. So this is the most common use case, I think. Alarming because it's rock solid. Or uh, batch calls. Okay. If mm -hmm. you want to call, you shouldn't do, but <laughs> if you want to call 1,000 people and connect them to your machine and distribute them to your agents for outbound calling, so... I think we call this predictive dialing in the yeah. call center mm -hmm. environment. That's how you can do this, for instance. Or if you want to connect them to your IVR menu, where, where you can say something like, you did not pay, we will call you back. Mm -hmm. Don't wait so long. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just, yeah. just, so just basically, it, it's, it's used for alarming and also uh, batch calling. Yes. Um, there, there could be something like, you click in your application on dial, mm -hmm. and then you create the file like this. Mm -hmm. But you could do this. Um, but in most cases, there are better ways to do so, because asterisk also has the asterisk AMI, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, uh, idea on idea scale. It is, yes. It's, it's got two votes for. now. Yes. Yeah. You voted, I voted. Yeah. So yeah. Get votes. voting. <laughs> <laughs> um, did we already mention that you should vote? <laughs> yeah, okay. No. You could do it like this, but... 
with the APIs, mm -hmm. it's much better, I think, because you can directly talk to the server. Mm -hmm. So you could also do batch dialing or alarming through the APIs, but maybe copying a file is easier for you and maybe more solid than if, if you making an API connection and um, you have to maintain the connection and stuff like this. So maybe it's easier. Now. Okay, um, right. Let's get into the techno technical stuff yes. now, because we have gone quite a long way into what you could use it for. Yes. Um, and I'm sure p plenty of people have uh, comments and so on, so just leave them there. But let's get into the technical stuff. Okay. Take it away. So, this is my asterisk installation as always. The first good idea is to start an editor and make the call file test.call. And I have to say something about this. It does not matter how you name the file. Okay. Even if there is no extension, just copy it there and asterisk will do something with it. Right. So the spool directory is slash var slash spool slash asterisk slash outgoing. Yep. This is the default directory. Mm -hmm. If you would edit it directly in this directory, it would be like this. You edit it, so you create the file. Maybe if your editor creates it when you open it, depends on your mm -hmm. um, editor, then he will read it immediately. See, there is nothing in there and just throw it away. Uh -huh. Otherwise, if he creates the file, when you say save the file, it would read the file, do what you typed in there, and then delete it because he did this call. And then you lost your file. So that's that not would, a good That would idea. be a, a real pain in the proverbial backside yes. because you do all the work and then yes. it's gone. 10 minutes <laughs> right. and then you save it and poof. Okay, so no. yeah. So save it into a different file first, and then when and you then need it, you bring copy it. it. When you need it, you copy it. Copy in. it and do not move it. Copy it because then you can repeat the process. Yeah. Do some tests, modifications, and copy it, copy it uh, over and over again. Okay, that's a good top tip there. Yes. Yeah. So we call it test.call. As I said, it does not matter. Then we copy an uh, instructions out of there. I prepared this, but. The truth is, this is just from voip-info.org. We referenced mm -hmm. the page a lot of times. Many times. Before, because uh, it's a good source for information about asterisks. Mm -hmm. Not as good as our video tutorials, for sure, yeah. but almost mm -hmm. as good and more complex, maybe. <laughs> um, so I just copy. This is the, the minimal example. Okay. You can copy from there. And if you want to just go to voip-info.org and search for call files, mm -hmm. then you will find this and then you can go ahead and modify it like we do now. Yeah, or you can get it from our blog when I post the video and then wait for next week when we have the more advanced one and get the next more advanced text as well. As you like. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> right. um, what do we have here? This is a minimal configurations. You have three things, channel, application, data. So channel is the channel where we want to connect to. In this uh, scenario, this is zip trunk name, 18822 and so on. This does mean use the provider. We call it this provider, so this mm -hmm. is the peer name, and yep. then call maybe my, my mm -hmm. mobile. Okay. Um, something like this. But that's only for like when you're going external. Does it have yes. to be um, an external provider context peer name? No, you can call every peer you want to. Okay. You can not only call the provider peer, but also your local peers. Okay. But then you don't have to pro provide a number as always. I can mm -hmm. just say the technology is zip slash and mm -hmm. I want to call James, this is the peer, uh -huh. and you don't need 100 different numbers, so I don't have to provide a number, I can just say zip slash James. We discussed this already a lot. Yeah. Uh, go to the tutorials. Uh, when we did our introduction this, to zip uh, peers. Introduction to zip, zip yeah. peers. I think it was one of the very first already where we configured yeah. the zip peers. Okay, go ahead, then we just delete this and we say um, James. And then we can say application and data. So first try to reach that channel mm -hmm. if that channel answers. This is important to understand. Only if this channel answers. Otherwise the call file will stop or the call mechanism will stop. Mm -hmm. We have retries and so on. We will see in the next tutorial, but now it will stop. Then we can start an application and provide some data. If you don't know what applications of asterisk are and uh, which data you can provide, go to our other tutorials where we talk about the dial plan, mm -hmm. the applications, and how you can use them. I think we had an extra tutorial about playback. We did, yeah. Um, it's where my love affair with the TT Monkey started. Ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> so it's the same. Mm -hmm. um, you can just use 
any application which asterisk provides. Yep. Um, and normally you put the data in brackets after the mm -hmm. application. Not in this case, you have a separate data line where you enter the data. Okay. So in our case, playback data is tt minus <laughs> monkeys. You really love them. I love them, yeah. CP test call to var spool asterisk outgoing. Like this. And then it will call immediately James. And if James answers, we connect into the monkey. You can see asterisk is calling. <laughs> and now the monkey. Our all-time favorite. <laughs> yeah, I do love them. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's it for now. So it's easy. It connects um, the caller, which is defined in the first channel name. So this channel, whatever this channel is, mm -hmm. to something which I define. Okay, fair enough. And that's it. Um, so as we sort of alluded to earlier, uh, we are going to be back next time around with a slightly more in-depth, detailed uh, look at Asterix call files. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. Get voting. Until next time. Goodbye. See you.